guys, Georgette here. Welcome back to the G.A. Rogers channel. Today I'm working on Simplicity 8992. Now keep it here to see me sew up this project and stay tuned to the end to see my review. Hi guys, I just wanted to pop in really quickly and apologize for that thumping noise that you might hear in the background of this video. I just got a brand new microphone and apparently it's not a very good one and that is what is causing the noise and I did not hear it until I had finished recording most of this video so it is going to be in the background for the majority of the video. Uh, hopefully it is not too annoying and I do hope that you'll stay and enjoy the rest of the video. And if you are a vlogger and you have a good microphone that you can plug into your camera or your phone, please leave me the name of it in the comments section below. All right, guys. Sorry about that. And you know what? It'll be better next time. Okay. Bye. Alrighty, so here is the front of the pattern, and as you can see, it's a pattern hacking pattern, so that means they provide you with a bunch of options that you can choose from. I've decided to start this with option number four, which is the button front crop cardigan with three quarter length sleeves. Okay, so let's take a look at the back of this pattern. All right, as you can see right up at the top are, are the line drawings. This is the one that I'm going to be making. For the fabrics, they would like, let's see, stretch knits only, double knit, interlock jersey, ponte, rib knit, sweater knits. And for the notions, if you're gonna make the dress length, you'll need eight three quarter inch buttons. If you're going to make three quarter length, you'll you'll need seven three quarter inch buttons. And for the short cardigan, which is the one I'm making, I will need four three quarter inch buttons. Now there's also a sleeveless option included in the pattern. It's not included up here on these line drawings, but there's a sleeveless option included. And for that, you would need a package of a half inch wide single fold bias tape. So I'm thinking about making the size small and for that I'd need 7 eighths of a yard of 60 inch wide fabric. However, the finished garment measurements for that small are 34 and I might want it a little bit bigger just for the sake of ease. So this is really going to be a test for me to see if I should go back in and make it a little bit bigger or it's fine. But as for now, I'm just going to stick with this size small and I'll just see what happens on the back end. All right, so I think that's it for the back of the pattern. Now let's take a little look at the instructions. Okay, so here we have the instructions and I am making the short cardigans. So it says I'm going to need pieces one through five. So let's check out what those pieces are. All right, so piece number one is the front. Number two is the back. Number three is the pocket. I think I'm going to go ahead and omit number three. I don't think I want a pocket in my short cardigan. Number four is the front facing and number five is this back facing. All right, so let me go ahead and trace out all of these patterns. Okay, so here is the fabric that I've chosen to use for the cardigan. It's this chocolate brown rib knit fabric. It's got a lot of stretch to it. It's got a good bit of drape. And I would say it's probably a medium to lightweight knit. It's not very heavy. But I just thought this would be awesome to test out the pattern because of how much give it has. So as you can see, I've already cut into it. And now I'm going to go back to the instructions and check out how they want me to put this cardigan together. Alrighty, now that my pattern pieces have been traced out, I'm going to go ahead and finish with the instructions. So first up, they want you to apply the pockets. Um, I'm not doing pockets, so I'm going to skip that. Next up are the shoulder seams, which include the hem tape. Then they want you to do the side seams. After that, this is a hack for slit openings. I'm not doing any slit openings in mine. So let's check out page three. So next up is the sleeve. Now they don't indicate in the instructions that you need to do your sleeve seam first before 
before you go ahead and gather up your sleeve cap. So that's just an FYI. Do the sleeve seam first, then gather your sleeve cap. After that, you're going to insert your sleeve into the armhole. And then this is the hack for sleeveless. We're not doing sleeveless, so we can move on. If we were doing cuffs, that would be next. And then after that will be the neck and front facing. So there is interfacing that needs to be attached to the front facing first, and then we will stitch it onto the cardigan. Next up, it wants us to do the lower hem. Let's see what's on the back. Okay, uh, we can skip this part because this is for the belt loop, so I'm not doing a belt. After that is gonna be buttonholes and buttons, and then the belt. So I should be stopping here with the buttonholes and buttons. Now that I have attached my stay tape to my shoulder seams and my interfacing to my facings, I'm going to take these pieces to the machine and batch stitch them. So I've already pinned my shoulder seams and my side seams, as well as my underarm sleeve seams and my neck facings at the shoulder seams. So I'm gonna take all these over to the machine and this will be my round one for batch stitching this cardigan. All right, so now that I've finished the first round of sewing for the cardigan, I'm going to do some pre-finishing. So for me, that includes serging the bottom hem of the cardigan and also the exterior part of the facing, the part that's not attached to the front cardigan. And also I'm going to serge along the bottom portion of my sleeve where my hem is gonna be. Now I don't have to serge the edges of these pieces uh, because it's knit, it's not gonna fray. All I have to do is just fold it up and hem it. But I like the look of a serged edge and then hemming it with that serged edge rather than just having a raw edge with a hem. So I'm going to take these back to the machine and do some more serging. Alrighty, so I've stitched along the edges of um, my cardigan hem, my sleeve hem, and the exterior of my facing. Now I should have gone and tightened up the tension on my serger because I'm only doing, I was only serging one layer instead of two, um, and I didn't, so my serger threads are a little loose in some places, uh, but that's not really a big concern. I have gone ahead and pinned my facings to the front part of the cardigan and I've folded up my hem allowance on my sleeve and I'm just going to baste that closed for now. It's easier for me to do it when it's this small piece than when it's attached to the cardigan itself. Just makes it a little bit less cumbersome at the sewing machine. So yes, I'm going to baste these together. I'm going to stitch this band onto the cardigan and go from there. All right, so I have basted the hem on my sleeve and I have pinned my sleeve into the armhole. So next up I'm going to take it to the machine and stitch the sleeve into the armhole and then I'm also going to understitch this facing. Uh, that's what the directions call for is to flip it down and understitch it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on my sewing machine as well. All right, here we go. As you can see, I've attached the sleeves to the armhole, and as per the instructions, I have understitched the facing 
and I just used a narrow zigzag stitch. Now this should ensure that the front and around the neckline of this cardigan lays nice and flat and you should not be able to see the facing. Next, I'm going to move on to the hems. I'm gonna hem the bottom of the cardigan and I'm going to finish hemming the sleeve. All right, so I have finished hemming the sleeve and the bottom of the cardigan, the hem, and I've also stitched the facing down. Next up are the buttons and buttonholes. Now the pattern calls for three quarter of an inch wide buttons. However, I don't have that size in my stash, at least not that size that matches this color. So I decided to go with these. These are some vintage buttons that I had in my stash. However, they are only five eighths of an inch wide and that's an eighth of an inch difference from what I would need. So because of that, I'm going to have to change the placement of the buttons on the button placket just slightly. Also, I like the button to be one of the buttons to be at the widest point of the bust. And for me, that it would be center of this buttonhole indication. Now the problem with that is, is I kind of want a button to go here right in this curved area, but that doesn't leave me a whole lot of space between where this button would go and where I would need this button. So I may put a snap on the inside. I don't know. I haven't decided that. As of now, my first button will start here and I will evenly space each buttonhole all the way down till I get to the hem. And hopefully I will find some kind of solution for this area right here that looks nice. And here it is. Here is the finished product. Uh, let me step back so you can see it. So I'm really pleased with how this cardigan came out. I think the fabric works really nicely for this pattern. It's that stretch rib that you guys saw in the beginning of the video. I love the length of the sleeves. Uh, the bottom of the cardigan hits me right at about the top of the hip, which works really nicely for me. Now the only true change that I made were the buttons. I didn't have the right size buttons, so I used smaller buttons. And because of that, I had to add two extra. I think the pattern calls for Four, and right now I have six um, and that's also because I changed the button placement now I was taught that you put a button at the fullest part of your bust or a button at the fullest part of your hip wherever you're putting buttons um, so because of that that moved the button placement from the pattern it moved it down a bit but I also wanted a button right at this top point because I think you kind of need it Anyway, I ended up being able to evenly space out all six buttons, and I think it looks pretty nice. I, I, I'm not mad at it. Now, this is how it looks when it's all buttoned up, but you can wear it unbuttoned, and that's probably how I would wear it is unbuttoned. So let me show you that. So this is how I would most likely wear it, just open, and it just gives it a more relaxed, casual look, and that's pretty much my entire wardrobe is relaxed and casual. Now, while I do love the fit of this garment, there were a few things that I had issues with. Like, for example, the instructions. Now, these instructions can be a little bit sparse in some places. They are very, very focused on telling you how to hack the pattern, and sometimes they skip over basic steps. So if you're a newbie sewist, this might cause a couple of problems along the way. However, if you have put together a few shirts here and there, then you know the process of how a shirt goes together, and it's no different for this cardigan, so you should be fine with that. But just bear in mind that if you are a new sewist, this might not be the sweater that you want to start with. All right, so the second issue that I had with this pattern were the facings. Now, they wanted you to interface the facing, and I used knit interfacing, 
but after having interfaced the facings and attached it to the cardigan itself, I found that it made this section where the facing is really bulky, I mean noticeably bulky in comparison to the rest of the cardigan. Also, having to attach the facing and then understitch it and then go back and top stitch it, it really added a lot of time needed to make this particular garment and it just felt like it was unnecessary wasted time. So for the next time when I make this garment, I'm actually going to eliminate the facing and just add a band. So I'm going to take that same pattern piece that was for the facing and I'm going to use that as the band, the front band and the neck band and finish the cardigan that way. Other than that, um, I just need to do a couple of more tweaks. I need to go back and press these sleeve caps down because you can see they're sticking up a little bit, which is a little bit odd. Um, I have to go back and tack down the facing in the places that I missed the top stitching. And what else needs to be done? I think I just need to put a label in it and we're good to go on that. For all in all, this was a fairly simple make to complete if you are not a beginner sewist. And I definitely will be making another one of these. I think my next one is going to be a three quarter length cardigan. And like I said before, I'm going to eliminate this facing business and I'm just going to do a front band and a neck band and call that a day. That should really shorten up the amount of time it takes to complete this. And that's it for me guys. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you'd want to see more from my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you all next time. Bye!